So we know that we have entities. We have 400 plus entities in Dynamics for version 901. And these entities are connected with one another. If I just go to an account record, I know that multiple contacts are associated with that, which I can access from a subgrid or from the navigation. Similar way, I know that one account is connected with multiple opportunities. So if I just go to an account, go to the navigation, I can see the list of all the opportunities associated with that. And then once I go to an opportunity where I'll get a lookup from there, I can just link that opportunity to the account. That is because there is a connection, there is a relationship exist. So by default, when you start using the CRM system in the base version, you have a lot of relationship exists between the entities. So every entity got a set of relationship with other entities. There are multiple types of relationship we have. So now we just need to understand how this relationship are created, how we can customize them, and how we can create more relationship between the entities so that we can make use of it. So entities can have relationship to other entities. So this relationship in Dynamics for CRM is similar to the table relationship in SQL database. That means when you just create SQL tables, where you just basically create a relationship as well. So if you're designing a system from scratch, I don't know how many of you have done it, then we basically just, uh, I mean, come up with the SRS, software requirement specification, from there we'll identify the nouns. And then from each of these nouns, we start designing an entity, at least we note down these uh, nouns, then filter it out, then you just identify, okay, these are the nouns we have from which we'll create the entities. So we'll start designing the entities like, for example, for a library management system, our entities would be uh, the librarian, the books, the library itself, and then the registration, and then student, teacher, or find. These are kind of entities we will have. And then we'll start writing the attributes and function. For example, for student, we'll have attributes like name, gender, division, and the class, or whatever. We just mentioned that. And the function would be like, uh, I mean, taking a book, retaining a book, paying, fine. These are the functions that the students do, right? That's what an object-oriented program you do. So I identify every entity, and then I identify the attributes and then functions. And then for every entity, we'll just create a class within that programming language. And for every class, we will create a table also. Then we link this table with the classes, and then we start writing the code. That's how we just build a program, any program in the object or in the programming language. So such a system is already in place. So while you're designing this table, for example, student, I have a table and then I have a class. Then for library, I have a table and then I have a class. And for teacher, I have a table and class, etc. So these tables will be designed and they will be created in the database manually. And then we link this table together. That means one student can have multiple books taken. That means one is too many relationship between the student and the books, and the teacher and the library. Okay, what is the relationship? Librarian and library, what is the relationship? So this, that's how we just create relationship between these tables. So one entity can have multiple relationships. So tables are all connected, then you just create the classes. Classes will have the functionalities and everything, and that's how we just build an application. So why I'm talking about that here is, here such an application is already designed and then built. So you have the tables, for every table have corresponding classes, which we are not going to access, but we are accessing the, what do you say, the entities. Now we are just customizing the entity means the tables are getting customized. So for every entity, we have multiple relationship with one another and corresponding there is a relationship in the database also. So when I'm just creating an entity, the CRM system, I'll get a set of relationship with other entities. Depends upon how many configuration I configured, settings I configured or in the entities properties window. Now in addition to that, you can just customize more relationship. We can just customize the existing relationship in a limited way, plus we can create more relationship. So the important point here is, which I already mentioned, when you create a new relationship, a table relationship will be created in the SQL Server database. Okay. Let's try to understand what are the different types of relationship we have. We have one to many relationship, many to one relationship, and many to many relationship. So if you just want to access the relationships of an entity, the existing ones, just go to that entity in, in your solution. So here I can access one to many relationships of account. You can see the primary entity, which is account, related entity, which are different, like activity, party, activity, connections, etc. 
and the type of behavior every relationship will have a relationship behavior there are four types of relationship behavior we'll explain that and this one is talking about the look of field name every relationship will create a lookup which is nothing but the foreign key we need to identify that way so when two tables are connected with one another there will be foreign key will be created in the related table so when i'm just connecting account table with activity party table that means one account account can have multiple rows in activity party table in the activity party table there will be a foreign key will be created with the name party so where i'll just keep the id of account yeah account and address one account can have multiple addresses so address will have a table where one of the new column will be created with the name parent so where i'll have the account id will be connected so one account can have multiple addresses link in the address table so that's how the connection will be made for one to many relationships same way many to one relationships are there and many to many relationships are there. so let me just navigate to my crm system just, let me just show you the relationship exist for an entity okay so let's navigate to the default solution click on customize the system in entity let me just go to account and then i can see the one to many relationship here and the many to one and end to end relationship these are three types of relationship i have so i can give you some examples of one to many relationship which you have already seen one to many account and contact one account have multiple contacts associated with it one account can have multiple opportunity associated with it one account have multiple price list associated with it all the addresses etc that means this account could be an organization and then this contact could be employees so one uh, organization can have multiple employees associated with it one employee can be linked to one company only right when you're reading from the other side and many to one relationship we can see that for the 29 of them that there where well, the primary entities like account lead account contact business units etc so when i'm just creating a one to many relationship there also be a many to one relationship created so one to many and many to one are just the two sides of your same entity i mean same entity relationship so when i'm just creating a one to many relationship from account to contact there will be a many to one relationship will be created from contact to account also so there are repetitions so in a many to one relationship only the direction changes here the starting point is contacts ending is accounts and many to many is different where we will just create multiple record with multiple records so that means leads is connected to the system where it is this is keep my name now here product let me just open it and we'll get it so here we'll not say primary entity and related entity instead we'll say current entity and other entity yeah current entity and other entity current entity is account other entity is product so one account can have any product associated with it one product can be associated with any account that is many to many relationships so these are three types of relationship we have now once you just start opening up the relationship we'll be able to see that there is very little customization is possible just to perform on every relationship so we're talking about customizing the relationship let me just open account to node that means one account can have multiple node associated with it here you can see primary entity is account related entity is not it is searchable or not searchable means searchable in an advanced file search hierarchical no hierarchical means both places we can have account the primary as well as related side we can have the same entity mentioned for example account and parent account one account can be connected to another account as a parent as a, sorry as a child right so there is a parent child relationship so self related self referential relationship we call it that when two entities connected together that is a normal relationship when the same entity is connected with another one that is known as self referential relationship that is known as hierarchical so we can make a hierarchy out of it then in a one to many relationship you will see two things one is a look of field and the other one is a navigation pane we will talk about it and then we get a relationship behavior so in a one to many and many to one relationship the same form will be applicable and you can see that we have hardly any room for customization here here the primary entity the related entity the name the searchable hierarchy everything is already set right it's all disabled 
what else we can change here is very little thing the relationship behavior we can change that into parental or configurable cascading this thing you can change first present is a parental i can click is to configurable cascading which i can change that's the only thing we can just change in a relationship which already exists so we have to be very careful when you're setting up a relationship because once you just made it wrong then you have to delete the relationship and create another one So here we are talking about two types of relationship, system relationship and custom relationship. System relationship are the one which get created when you are creating an entity, which hardly you can just customize or modify, you can neither delete it. So once a relationship is made, there will be a mapping will be created between these two entities. Trying to create a relationship, these are the things will be filled up. The primary entity name, the related entity name, lookup field name and relationship behavior. Those are the things you just need to fill up. Now we need to talk about reference, sorry, we need to talk about relationship behaviors. So relationship behaviors define how two entities are connected and how operations on the parent entity affect the related entity. So basically there are four types of relationship behaviors. We we'll talk about that, so this is where you can access it. So for an existing system entity, you will get only two. I'll explain it. First, let's try to create a relationship, then we'll just explain this one. So I'll just go to my customization. Here I'm an account entity. Go to one to many relationship, click on new one to many relationship. So let me just note it on what I'm trying basically trying to do. So I'm going to put two. Okay. The following fields. I mean, relationship name. Relationship name. Then lookup field. And then navigation key item. And relationship behavior. Those are the four things you need to just enter. So I'll go here. Try to fill up this primary entity, related entity is invoice. This is going to be the schema name of the relationship. Magnificent underscore account underscore invoice. I can just change it if I want to. And then this is what I need to talk about. When you want to many relationship will be created two new things will be created as part of that one is a look of field other one is a navigation pane item so the primary entity will get a navigation pane item that means you go to the navigation you will get a new a new link will be created that means here primary entity is account related is invoice for the account, account entity if i go to the navigation i will see there is an invoice link when i click on it and invoice associated invoice subject will be displayed where i will be able to add the invoices for this account record that's why i connected now if i go to the related entity that is invoice here i'll get a lookup field there that is a foreign key using that lookup field i will be able to select my account so these two things where it will be created for the navigation pane item will be created for the primary entity and lookup field will be created for the related entity that's what you need to understand if you understand that thing then you understand one to many relationship so I just need to give a name to the lookup field. So I would say account name, account itself, right? Because that is a foreign key. This is going to be my foreign key for the invoice table. And then for the primer ND, whether I should display the navigation pane item or not, I have the option, do not display. That means in the primary uh, navigation of account, it will not be displayed at all. If I want to display it, what do you want to display? Use a plural name, that means plural name of invoices will be displayed. Or I say custom label. So here I can say anything. I would say like account invoices. Or invoices for account, right? We just want to make it descriptive. And then there are different areas in the navigation area or subsection where I can just select the name of that, like Details, marketing, sales, where you want to have it. I will select under sales. 
Yep. Now finally, we just need to set the relationship behavior. So basically, there are four types of relationship behavior, which is important. Parental, referential, referential restrict, delete, and configurable cascading. So relationship behavior indicate this. Here I have account and invoice entity. So account is a parent one and invoice is a related entity. Now when I just perform on a record of account, what will happen to the invoice record or invoice records? If I delete the account record, what will happen to the associated invoice record? If I just change the ownership of the parent record, what will happen to the invoice record? So that behavior we are defining here, right? So basically there are seven operation in a seven operation like assign, share, and share, roll of field, reparent, merge, and delete. These are the seven operations which will be defined or which will be controlled by this relationship behavior. So first one is parental. So as the name indicates, parental means whatever I do on the uh, parent, the same thing will happen on the child. This is mostly true, right? I don't know. These days is different. If the parent is an engineer, then they want their kid to be an engineer. I don't know why. And if the parent is a doctor, of course, 99% of their kid will be a doctor also. So many things that parents do, they try to keep that same thing to their child also. And I mean, heredity or what do you say, genes or whatever work. There are many things will be naturally the same in the child also from the parent, right? So, yeah, so that is a parental relationship or I'd say like parental behavior. That means whatever I do, if I delete an account record, all the invoices will be deleted. If I assign, let me show you that. If I just, I can see all the changes. So if I just share the record, unshare it, or I reparent it, delete it, merge it, when I do all this operation, I can see most of the places it is cascaded all. Cascade all means whatever I do on the parent, the same thing will work on the child also. So this is the reason when I'm trying to delete an account record, you'll get a big error message, not error, the warning message saying that all the associated contact opportunities account will be deleted, right? Because the relationship between account and these entities are parental. So we have to be careful. So when I delete an account record, even if there are 10,000 contacts associated with all that will be deleted because the relationship type is that. So when you're deleting an account next time on a live environment, you have to be very careful because that is the damage it's going to have. And if I'm just sharing an account record, all the associated invoice in this case will be shared. Same way unshare, roll of field, and then uh, reparent, delete, merge. So that is the parental one. And next one is referential. So we don't have any control on what we can just do here. We can just say referential. Here we can see that for all this operation, except the last two, it is cascaded none. That means if I just assign the account record, the associated invoice record will be will not be assigned. Same goes for share, unshare, and everything. For delete, it is remove the link. Sorry, remove the link. That means the link between the account and invoices will be simply removed. That means the value in the foreign key will be deleted. I can create an invoice separately where the lookup field would be account ID right here. And it can have an account ID. That means it is linked with an account. It cannot have an account ID. I'm sorry. It, it can have a uh, lookup field where there is no account ID also. That means it is standard song. It's not associated with an account. So that case it is what I'm talking about. So when I'm just deleting an account record, the link between these two, uh, that means the value in the lookup field will be removed. Merge means it is still cascaded on. That means if I merge the account, still Universe will be all the universe will be merged as per referential. So referential is the most safer one, and this is the default option when you create a relationship. And third one is referential restrict delete. This is very similar to how you do referential one. The only difference here is the delete is restrict, restricted. Rest everything is the same. What is referential restrict delete means? If I delete an account record, I cannot do that because all the associated invoices are still there. So once I delete all the associated invoice record, only then I can go ahead and delete the account record. For the delete, it is mutually exclusive. The operation is mutually exclusive. The restrict one means when I delete the account record, the associated record will not be deleted. But here it's like if I want to delete the account record, all the invoice record has to be deleted. Okay, that is referential restrict delete. And the fourth one is, configurable cascading that means I can decide it 
how the chain should be, which gives you the full control. I have the options like cascade all, cascade active, cascade use around, cascade none, etc. Cascade all and cascade none, you know, already. Cascade active means if I just assign an account record, all the associated active invoice record will be assigned. Cascade user on means same thing. If I assign an account record which belongs to me, and if I got five invoices associated with the account record, three of them are belong to me. That means I am the owner. Then only those three will be assigned. That remaining two will be the same thing. Same goes for share and everything. That is cascade user on. So you have spot behavior. So you can just say like, okay, assign cascade active or share cascade on or unshare cascade user on. The parent, I would say like user on delete. You can just get all, all this option, cascade all, remove link, restrict, etc. I can just set that. And then all this I can set and can save it. So that's how you can configure it. For the other three types, parental, Referential, restrict, delete. These two, I cannot change it. It is system defined. Don't change it. Here we didn't have any option to change it, but now once you set it referential or parental, once you save the relationship, then you come back, you have the option to change that into configurable cascading because that saves a lot of your pain. Save you from pain because we didn't have this option earlier. Because once you create a parental relationship, it means it's like that. And once you find it out that is not the one you're supposed to set, then you should delete that and then then create it. So by the time you would have created records, it was very painful. So now we have that option, so don't worry. So I just set to referential, this one, and then I just save and close. So I just create a new relationship, one to many between account and invoice. No, I cannot say that. An error occurred. So let me see. Let me see what went wrong. The schema name I can myself, but I was just not okay. So there is already a relationship between account and invoice with the same name, this name. So if I change it to something else, uh, account invoice, account invoice, what, what other name will be? Invoices or so new one to many relationship is created for account entity. I can just access that from here. I'll say account custom. Customers, so there are many, so I just need to look here. Account to invoice, there is a one referential type. There is already existing one more is there in the system that is also invoice. Now you get two. This is the default one I just created. This one, yep. I can just delete it also, not an issue, but now there are no records created. Access in this one, so I can simply create it, delete it also. That's why I created a one to many relationship. Now you need to understand that once I make a one to many relationship between account and invoices, if I just go to invoice entity, not here, if I just go to invoice entity, where I'll be able to see a many to one relationship we created from invoice to accounts. Did I just, account invoice is the one. No, this one is already there. Referential one. Okay, so the one we just created is one to many only. Right? Yep. So there is a many to one is created for the related entity. Okay. So we just created a relationship. Now we just need to do a small thing here. If I just go to account record, definitely I'll get a navigation pane item. But for the related entity, which is inverse, I just need to add that look of field. So here is that, right? So where it is? It is about not. So for this relationship, let me just open this up. So the look of field will be created. This field will be created with the name account. That I need to add to the invoice form. But for the uh, account, Navigation pane item will be already there under sales. So let me just go here and go to an account record. Now you can see the related one here. That's how it comes now, where I'll be able to see invoices for accounts under sales partner opportunity. If it is not appearing, means it is not properly published, so we have to do that. So let me just do that part publishing. 
So once it is published, then I should be able to get it. News are there, but that is not what we are looking for. Let me just check the old UI and see if I'm getting in that one. We're just still trying out the new UI and see if you just want to make any change to that. But by just by doing this one, creating a relationship and publishing it, you will definitely get it. You don't need to do anything else. Where were we? So yeah, so let me just go to any account record. And then, pardon me for changing this. Okay, it's not, it's not displayed properly. Okay, so I just need to check that once again. So here is the one, account and invoices, account, custom label. Ah, it's my mistake. You can see I set custom label here, but I didn't set any custom label. They didn't show me an error message also, right? So if I had selected plural name, it should have already appeared, but I had set, what? I had set a name here if I have not. Okay, anyway, let me set it. Custom label. Return that. Now let me refresh. Now you got it. So it was created before also, but we didn't give that navigation pane. So now let me add invoices from here. You can create new invoices or I can just access existing invoices and link with it. But it is one too many. If I'm trying to add an invoice, it's already link with another account it will show me an error message yeah so these are the two invoices i'm just linking this one these two invoices i cannot link with any other account because i think it's an exception and when i'm just going to a invoice record i supposed to add a lookup field here so i just need to customize this form okay and i just need to add that lookup field so there is already a relationship access between entity so i just need to customize this one a uh, form editor, then I just need to, if I come to custom fields here, I'll be able to see one field here with the name account, which I can add it here, anywhere on the form where it is suitable. Save and publish it. That means this invoice will have this account field from where I can just link an invoice record account field. Or I can come to the um, account, go to navigation from there I can link, but from the invoice side I can just link it now. Okay, so we'll have that field also on the form from there I can link it. So that's how you create a one-to-many relationship.